good morning so today this is my fifth lecture in the series of lectures on data wrangling with python so in this lecture i am going to introduce you the pandas library and start working on this library so this is the part one so i am going to do some programming also so there are some programming sessions and there are probably part 1 to it may be another uh, it may extend to uh, four parts so in these four parts i am going to discuss about the full programming of data frames using the pandas and uh, many other operations uh, and the usage of pandas i am going to uh, use through practical uh, programming sessions okay. so let us go move to the topics these are the this is these are the topics i am going to cover today there is pandas library what is pandas library what is pandas series pandas series and data frame and how to create the data frames or series and some kind of some preliminary exploration of the data contained in the data frame and this is the source i am taking i have taken this release version 1.3.4 pandas data analysis toolkit and probably uh, this may not be the latest one there may be latest versions also must be available but it won't stop us from learning the basics so what is pandas pandas is one of the python libraries a bsd license that means open source bsd means berkeley source distribution so they license several softwares as open source and this pandas is used for working with data sets so what is data set i have described and i have given full set of uh, examples and the locations where these data sets are available so it is a set of all data uh, a, one kind of data and on which you are going to experiment and pandas provide high performance and convenient data structures so this is the very important thing and convenient data structures so these data structures are uh, much advanced compared to c and they are uh, similar to any kind of object oriented uh, languages because here every, every data structure is an object for example as i told you series if you take the panda series it is a object and if i take a data frame it is also an object so everything is considered as object so so to support this objects different uh, types of objects we must have the convenient data structures otherwise the database operations or data set operations will be will not be smooth and uh, they will uh, take more time so this is very important property to start with of course pandas has several many other things also pandas it has the following i mean it has the functions of cleaning exploring manipulation and manipulating and analyzing the data so before we analyze the data we may have to do some manipulations like standardization or normalization and exploration so before doing analysis i want to just maybe visually or using some visual means see the data set values as it is raw data or you may have to view the data using some pictorial representations like charts and uh, plots and you have to clean this data because you may have uh, this is the cleaning cleaning is a, a small part of data wrangling and uh, of course uh, mm, there are cleaning plus some other things called as data wrangling and So the pandas have support for all these things and we are going to study in this session pandas allows data manipulation what are the manipulation here i told manipulation and what are these manipulation operations merging merging the two data frames that means i mean to start with we can assume that we can take the data frame as a two dimensional array as a tabular data basically and you may have to merge two tables reshape the tables you have to select the select one of the row or one of the column or you may have to slice things 
and of course you have the uh, along with cleaning and including cleaning the other wrangling features are also uh, are there okay this is the general overall capabilities and these are specifically for data manipulation purpose because we are going to manipulate the data in our wrangling process and and uh, to know some history about this um, some curiosity the term pandas was created by the software developer wes mckee wes mckee in 2008 and was made public in 2009 so this software uh, developer uh, mckee and uh, mckee while at aqr capital management it was his workplace out of the need for a high performance flexible tool to perform quantitative analysis on the financial data it was company's financial data he wanted to analyze so that was the <coughs> motivation for him to develop this pandas uh, and this pandas project uh, started by him and here the term was derived from panel data and some other places i have seen this that the <coughs> term pandas has derived from this also but i am not sure so if you are curious maybe you can further explore i find some similarity here so you can take panel data means panda yes means maybe plural or uh, maybe from this yes okay so it is not really matching so it is the um, uh, i agree with panel data and this was taken from this and the source is wikipedia data structures so data structures are the major uh setup to analyze the to organize the data in a better way in any language so here in pandas the data structure refers to the specialized way of organizing data it is a general definition only and the pandas has two main types of data structures one is series it is one dimensional labeled array so this is more important if you don't give any label it may take them its default label or something like that so there are options for that and here so basically it is an array array with labels so actual data is there and its la corresponding labels are also there so it is uh, something like a uh, one element in the dictionary and here if i take data frame it is a two dimensional labeled tabular structure so it is like an excel spreadsheet or sql table or a frame in the r okay then r program r language it also has similar to data frame they call it as frame and and sometimes some people call even data frame also and uh, this sql table also in the same form as a two dimensional structure so similarly data frame nothing new in that basically uh, but it always has the labels it has the labels for rows it has the labels for columns also okay so that is what uh, what is called what we take it as a data frame in pandas okay so pandas data structures can be created how to create these structures using using the dictionary you can create using the n dimensional array so when i say n dimensional array the data types in this array are same when i say dictionary so it has normal definition uh, as in uh, regular python intrinsic python that is it has key values and it has uh, it has keys and corresponding to each key it has a value it can be a single value or it can be a list also okay list of values so this is and you can create from the scalar values also sometimes uh, in some kind of operations you want to duplicate a scalar you want to field a constant uh, or uh, yeah it is a constant basically scalar means constant only and constant uh, i mean uh, a point uh, is a point uh, data single value and it is to be filled with throughout the table for example in that case you you have to go for this kind of thing that is also that is useful somewhere uh, probably if i get an opportunity i will discuss uh, in my lectures also so let us move to the next that is some some more things about the uh, pandas data frame before we start programming a data frame is again a two dimensional data structure that can store the data of different types so this is more important including characters 
integers and integers again can be 32 bit or 64 bit or 128 and floating point yeah, generally integers we limit to uh, 32 generally floating point you can go up to 64 even uh, python uses 128 also so that and these are the numerical things other than these characters this is used for strings and the categorical data and more in the columns okay so but one thing is in each column of the data frame data data uh, is data type is same for example if the column one in the data frame may be integers column two may be characters or strings uh, uh, four may be some data or time like that okay so but within the column all rows in a column have the same data data type okay so when using a python dictionary of lists so this is a dictionary consisting of lists each list is assigned to a key so in that case the, the dictionary keys will be used as the column headers and the values in each list as the columns of the data frame okay this we are going to uh, study uh, during the programming session today and i will read it again the dictionary keys are used as column headers means column labels and values in each values under each key that is they are nothing but list okay they are used as because in this list the data type is same and uh, as columns of the uh, data frame okay of course here uh, we will see some examples exactly to know its uh, nature and as I told you, let us compare the Panda series object, series object and data frame object. And here this is one dimensional data structure. Series means data frame means two dimensional data structure. Here one dimensional means of same data type. That is that's why you call this as homogeneous array. It is a homogeneous array and he is heterogeneous array because the elements uh, can be different data types. That means here the elements means not within the column. Different columns can have different data types. That's why in that way it is column heterogeneous, you can say. And uh, yeah, column had uh, column or row, I mean it is heterogeneous. So each column has the uh, each column can have different data types, but within the column, same data type. And it is size immutable. Once you uh, this decide the size, once you create the array. So it is, it is more or less like a numpy, numerical python, numpy array. Uh, and uh, once you fix the size and create it, you cannot change after the its creation. If you want to change, you have to, uh, you know, nullify that. That means if you create the new one, the old one will, will go away. So it is, that's why the series is an immutable object, whereas the data frame is mutable object. That means if it is not mutable, it is not useful at all for us because you are going to ma manipulate the data so it should allow the manipulation of data means not only changing the value it, it also includes the addition of the addition and deletion of rows and columns so all the things are possible so that's why this data frame must be invariably uh, size mutable <coughs> so now let us have some programming session some interesting programming session. I use Spider IDE and you can use other tools, uh, any notebooks. So I'm moving to programming session. Let us start our programming session. Here, I am executing my programs using Pandas in Spider IDE. This is the Spider IDE. And I have, just to introduce you, I expect that you know the environment of spider. And this is my program script. And here, this is the console. So here I have the help variables. And plots and files list, what are the, whatever files are available. Okay, so let us start uh, with my program that is 
my video lecture file dot poi my file name is my video lecture file and i have put it in the comments here and i am importing the pandas library as a pd it is a shortcut pd is the shortcut for pandas this is the local name given in my program and i am also importing the numpy as np because some some of the numpy functions i may use so i am importing both pandas and numpy and i assume that these two are already installed and let us create that series first pandas data series as i told you there are three methods so first method is creating the series from the dictionary so what is dictionary if you see here i am highlighting the student details this is the dictionary and i am specifying this dictionary in this way okay so there are some items i think it, they are not uh, directly visible here so i will execute this i will execute this first part and this is the creation see here so here this is the student details is the dictionary i have created and and i am calling this this dictionary into the data field okay this is the data variable object so this object it has argument i am giving here this is a pd dot series basically i am taking this student detail and i am reading that as a panda series this is the method pd dot series is the method for that i am assigning this dictionary name to this data and i am giving a name for this as my dictionary series this is for just easier identification and after executing this method so the dictionary information whatever i have given is assigned to series so the now the object is series and i am printing here the series so this is what is the sequence of these instructions now i am because i first time doing i am importing and i am executing this one so uh, executing the selection here we see on the right side in the console so this is what i have so this is what is the code executed so here also you can see this is what student details and the first column is roll numbers basically and this roll numbers are there and these are the this is the column actually 100 60 23 this is the data basically and this these are the uh, the keys basically so in the dictionary these are the keys the first column is the key and these are the values so these are converted into now as a labels here okay this is a label and uh, that is one one method then if you see here the name is shown here as my dictionary series and its data type is integer 64 bits 64 bit integer because this python uh, pandas or python environment takes like that so the, all these values are stored as 64 bit integers now i consider the second example better example again i have selected here so this is what i am creating again another series from the n dimensional array this is the python array or numpy array and this has a uniform data types that is integers here and this is nothing but marks underscore english so this is assigned with this list or array and i am trying to convert this array into pandas series 
Okay, this is the method again I am using. Here, now I am specifying the index also. So, index means, it is basically, what is index? Index means, the row labels, basically no, row labels. And again, I have the name as it is, whatever is the name, earlier I have specified, same name I have given. So, additionally, I have inserted another option that is index I am specifying. These are nothing but row labels. Now, I will execute this program. I am executing the selection. So, I am printing the series. So, the print is like this. So, this is what I have executed. So, here and the indices are, row indices are 1, 2, 2, 8. There are 8 rows, 8 row indices and this marks also 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 65, 78, 88. These are the marks which I have given. So, these are different from the previous uh, series because this is the first series I have generated and I am overwriting that series here. Okay. So, here another series I am generating, it is overwriting the previous one. So, currently available is uh, this series. Okay. Now, I have printed this. So, first case I have created a dictionary and converted the dictionary into Pandas data frame. And second case is I have created the n dimensional array, n day array. Here it is one dimension. And this I have converted into pandas data frame. Sorry, series now. Now, third, third uh, option is from a scalar value. As I told you in my PPT, so there is a scalar value, single value, constant value. I want to fill with this uh, uh, in the series. So, let me execute this selection again. So, this is what here, same again, 8 rows are there. All are filled with 85 only, constant. So, these kind of things, these things are useful. Sometimes when you want to subtract the mean, mean from a column, then what you have to do? Every element, every row must be subtracted. Um, I mean, every row should be, subtra should be subtracted. Uh, I mean, 85, sorry, 85 should be subtracted from every row. So, in that case, these kind of things are useful. So, you will be filling with constant value. And so, three versions of uh, Panda series generation I have shown. Now, I will move to series. Okay. So, three versions of creation of the Panda's data series I have shown. Now, let us create the Panda's data frame. So, this is data frame I am creating. So, I am specifying the Again, dictionary here. So, in this dictionary, if you take, see this dictionary, I have keys here. Student name is one key. Marks underscore physics is one key. And marks underscore maths is another key. So, like that, there are four keys I have given. And roll number, of course, roll number is there, five. Five keys are there corresponding to uh, five keys. I have the uh, list. So, corresponding to roll number key, I have this list corresponding to student name key. I have this list name of the students and corresponding to marks underscore English. I have this array. Actually, it is an array. So, like that, I have specified keys and values here. So, I am executing this selection first. So, after execution of this, I have created. So, I have to select it properly. Okay. So, I have executed now. So, this is what, what is there. Now, now I have created the, this dictionary, student details. Now, what I am doing, I am assigning, I am converting this into data frame. See here, this is the data frame method I am using. Earlier, it was series. In place of series, I, have, I am using now the data frame. Okay. So, PD data frame and assigning to the method output is assigned to DF data frame and what are the options here? Data is nothing but student details here. Index I have given 1, 2, 8. Uh, now, I am selecting this, these statements. I am executing the selection. So, now the data frame is created. If you see this, I am, I have uh, extended this for better viewing. So, here if I see, whatever keys were there earlier, 
they have become the column labels student name marks underscore english marks underscore physics like that okay so here this student name there is no underscore here because the actual key itself has no underscore here see in the editor so this see here this is editor in the i have marked with blue color okay so this is what is there now because there is no underscore here also there is no underscore so don't confuse with that now roll number student name marks in english marks in physics marks in mathematics they are the column labels now what are the columns here how many columns are there now 1 2 3 4 4 5 and rows are 8 so this is the first record this is the first record is this roll number is 7 10 and student name is divyanshu english mark 70 physics marks 95 mathematics marks 85 okay so this is the data frame i have created and what are the what is the what are the row labels here this 1 2 3 1 2 3 are the 1 2 3 up to 8 these are the uh, labels okay these are the uh, row labels basically so let us do next one okay so this is what i have seen here what is in this one the label in this uh, lines of code index is a b c d i have modifying the index from 1 to 8 to uh, alphabets so same thing i execute here again again i am uh, converting the dictionary to data frame so i have executed that code and i am expanding the console here if you see here same thing here everything is same except the row labels row labels are now a b c so like that up to h h mean equal to 8 1 to 8 so now they have become a to h now let us come to code again and here without giving index without giving index i am converting the dictionary by name student details into pandas data frame i am not giving any index so default so let us see if i don't give the index what it takes so here because i have not given the index it is starting from zero is a python notation it starts from zero to uh, if the number of rows are 8 8 minus 1 0 to 7 so these are the default if you don't give index automatically it python takes this indices 0 to 7 like this okay so that is what about the creation of data frame now some exploration we can do some kind of exploration preliminary things we will do further things later and i want to find the data types df dot data types i want to find it the and for that let let us see the output so, so this i am again executing this so this is what is created df data types so what are the data types here so it contains two objects one object is roll number second object is student name okay and the remaining three they are basically arrays numerical arrays and they are stored as 64 bit integers so that is what is by using this uh, df dot data types you get this kind of information about the uh, data frame now where is data frame df is the data frame df is our data frame so every operation we are going to do on this df now df dot n unique n unique means let us see i will explain okay so here student name for example so for that i think uh, better uh, print the df also i am printing df here so this is df now now i execute this n unique n unique in the data frame so what it will do is what it will do is here in each in each column in each column row number for example 
how many unique values are there so here 710 714 751 last okay so there are eight roll numbers are unique so that's why you got roll number equal to unique here okay so axis 0 means you are trying to find the uh units uniqueness uh, in the columns basically okay so that means across the rows you are seeing so it is within each column you are seeing so in this column in this under roll number column all are distinct unique means distinct so the no repetitions are there then student name no repetitions here eight see if you see here student names divanshu divyanshu jyotika kavya like that etc okay vinith these are the now there are no repetition so that's why you got eight count now marks underscore english under this i got six here why i got six if you take the marks english uh 90 is here and 90 is here 90 is repeating twice then 75 is also repeating twice okay it is repeating so that's why so two are repeating so minus two so eight total eight are there eight minus two six so in the same way if you take physics also six so physics marks if you uh, see uh, where are the repetitions here 80 and 80 there are repetitions here again 80 80 80 3 80s are there here okay so 280 is a duplicates we have to refer, so the unique, unique count is in the physics six here then here in the maths in the maths marks all are unique that's why i got eight okay so this is what is unique number of uh, along axis zero that is okay that is along the columns now i want to find along the rows let us find along the rows i am executing the same program now again uh, i will print df so that we can compare and uh, again let me execute this again so this is what we have if you see here so this is the our data frame in this data frame axis equal to 1 so that is across the columns i am seeing you know that means along the row along the row uh, across the columns both are same so here if i take uh, there are five here unique five so this is the this is the first one they are all unique five five entries in five columns they are unique and if you take second one that is here i have 90 here i have 90 and here 90 two are repeating along the row so that's why it is showing four now if i take third one third row if i take so row number is different name is different 80 80 80 all marks are same here 80 80 so three are repeating so two are duplicates so 1 1 2 3 these are the unique things so that is the reason you got three here so like that you can find the unique values because these are useful later uh, for further analysis for further exploration basically so here uh, along the rows and along the columns uh, we found the uh, unique values okay number of unique values so what i am doing here i am just uh, copying this code and pasting it here and here i am removing the n here n here so this is another method just unique just unique okay so it has no attribute it is showing and so next what i will do is because i want to sh show you different things and here this is df dot unique nothing now so i am selecting this okay so this unique it won't work okay so we will see because the 
there are uh, different things in the unit i i try to execute something so let us move to the i mean after this i will demonstrate that i thought of there is a afterwards it is there now uh, i have the earlier generated series 1 so series 1 i already have so this is the series 1 and series 1 i want to show the data types it is object basically see here it is object so for that i use the series 1 dot d type then i am printing this so same thing whether you give the name directly or print same thing and here taking the series 2 i am executing this so it has executed series 2 but it is not printing so series 2 data type i will take and it is data type is int 4 okay so this is the i mean if i use this to print values i think i have we have printed already so this is series uh, uh, two values because we have to uh, print this series what is this series 2 series 2 is the second column okay and what is the first one series here it is the roll number roll number i have extracted the roll number called it as series 1 extracted the english marks and called it as series 2 okay i wanted to know the data types here here it was the object data type as we have seen here it is the i mean uh, series 2 data type here i am again executing so we got integer 64 in the in the command window and but this data types it won't take uh, it, it is you get an error because it won't take for the ndra because the marks it is ndra basically um, so this is what we have now let us see another exploration in this exploration what i am doing is i am extracting the english marks and i am counting the values there in the in this column i am counting that is the count i am using here count variable and i am printing this variable so what i got here if you see and let me print this print this data frame so let us take this i will take only this instead of data frame i am taking only one column so i have this now what is the count here if you see the count here so here if you see earlier i have printed count it has given count 75 two times 92 times 70 one time 80 one time 85 one time 95 one time like that it is 70 see here 75 two times so here it is 75 and 75 two times and 92 times 90 here one time and second time so similarly other thing other values are occurring only once here okay so basically we are counting the uh, unique values here okay now and value counts that is given by this method value underscore counts we have to use the same thing you cannot put any capital letters here you cannot skip underscore you cannot skip the uh, braces also because it is a method now another explanation i am doing here i want to same information i want to uh, print but in the index sorted form so i want to sort this and i want to print the same thing again so let me see here so i am again executing the selection so you got the counts here again so counts here the index wise it is sorted here so earlier earlier when you see here see here 70 75 yeah, these are yeah, these are already sorted so before that before that whatever i have printed uh, let us see here this is 75 75 2 and 90 so after 75 i got 90 here then 70 so this is not sorted once you sort this one you will get this kind of output starting with 70 minimum value 
max value is 95. So same information counts of unique values in this column, numerical column, uh, but in a sorted way. We have sorted this and uh, printed. Because these are all I am going to use for in, in my future lectures. Now, this series 2, what is series 2? Series 2 is nothing but the marks English column. Marks in English column, that is the uh, series 2. See, if you see here, this is the series 2. So, I want to find the shape of this series 2. Series 2, what is the shape here? 8 rows are there. That means all columns, 8 rows. One column basically, all columns, 8 rows. That is what you see here in the console window. Now, df dot shape. Total data frame I am taking. Instead of taking one column, I have taken df total frame and now df dot shape. So, what it prints? 8, 5. It is printing 8, 5. That means 8 rows are there and 5 columns are there. Now, same thing, I, I skip this, uh, of course, uh, series 2 size. 8. Size means length. Length means in this case because only one, one column. Length means number of rows basically. So, df dot size, if I see, here you will get 40. So, it is a total number of uh, identities, total number of elements, 40 elements and there are 40 elements here, 8 into 5. So, 8 into 5, 8 rows into 5 columns, 8 into 5, 40, if, if it shows as this. Okay. Now, let us see the information. So, I cannot find this because uh, an ND array, it is an ND array, series 2 means one column, I have uh, extracted that and it, can, it won't support the uh, info method. Now, the total data frame, df, if I take, it supports the uh, info method. So, I am executing this. So, in this one, what it is showing, if you see here, it is the information. It is basically the data type information and the account it gives. So, there are zero, first one, first row number, that is the first column in the data frame and it is a non-null, no null values, no missing values. It is an object. Similarly, second one is Second one is also an object, student name, its label is student name. No null values here, it is object again. <coughs> and uh, here, marks underscore English, this is the third column. No null values here. Total 8 values, count is 8 values and it is integer 64. So, data types, data types and count it will give. That is the information regarding the total data frame. Okay. Now, let us talk about another one, interesting one, that is the describe, series 2 dot describe. I am using this method, so it won't support naturally. So, this info and describe methods, they, sub, they are supported only by the pandas data frame, not by end array. So, to demonstrate that one, I have added here. Now, I am taking the full data frame and I am using the, I want to have some description of this. So, I am executing the selection. So, I got this. So, what is the description here? First count, how many are there? And if you see here, it takes, because this is some uh, statistical description, it gives the statistical description uh, only for the numerical uh, variables, okay, numerical uh, elements, uh, numerical columns, you should say. So, each column is numerical, otherwise you cannot find any statistical analysis and uh, the other two objects are skipped here, only the results for uh, numerical columns are shown here. So, first one is count, second one is mean, that is average value, average marks in English is 82.5, average marks in physics is 85.37, uh, average marks in mathematics here is 88.125, okay, like that. Now, Standard deviation, this is the mean value, this is the standard deviation, spread, spread is the variation is 8.8, .8, here 8.17, here 7.45, okay. Now minimum value, minimum value is 70, max value is 95, then percentiles, quartiles, so that is 25% quartile, that is 75, this is 50% quartile, 82, okay, that means it is nothing but median, below 82.5, some numbers are there, okay. 
because there are uh, some numbers are there and uh, i mean 50% of the values are below 82.5 remaining 50% of the values are above 80 above 82.5 that is what okay that is the meaning of this median and if i take 75% quartile so 75% of the values are below 90 the remaining uh, 20, uh, remaining 10% of the values are above 90 that is the meaning of this one okay and of course maximum is 95 that means no value is above 95 all values are below 95 so that is what we have so some kind of preliminary description i have given here and in the next lecture i am stopping the lecture here in the next lecture i am going to uh, i am going to explore the data further this is only preliminary analysis i have given in the, my first lecture and the next lecture onwards i will give the i will go a bit deeper deeper uh, deeper into the uh, contents okay thank you for your attention like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates